Meanwhile, no end to the violence in Afghanistan. Every day there is news of a fresh blast. More lives lost, more people injured. What has triggered this new spate of violence in the middle of a pandemic? Who stands to gain from this? We explore these questions in a Gravitas ground report from Kabul. Another day of violence in Afghanistan. Four civilians were killed and eight others were injured in the Zabul province. The victims were travelling by bus when a roadside bomb exploded. Two children were among the dead. This blast was just one of the many bloody attacks that has hit Afghanistan this month. Flashback 24 hours ago. Seven people were killed and 40 others were injured in the Ghazni province. A car bomb blew up near a military base. The target was the National Directorate of Security Unit. Most of the victims were intelligence personnel. The Taliban claimed responsibility for the attack. What was it trying to prove? Rewind another 24 hours. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and opposition leader Abdullah Abdullah signed a power-sharing agreement. So on paper, the battle for political power was over. The road ahead for the intra-Afghan talks and a peace deal was clear. The Taliban was clearly not pleased. Three days ago, it killed at least five people in the eastern city of Gardez. It blew up a truck packed with explosives near a military court. At least a dozen civilians were injured. What shook the world was this attack. On the 12th of May, terrorists stormed a maternity hospital in Kabul. 24 people were killed, including two newborn babies. On the same day, a suicide bomber targeted a funeral in the Nangarhar province. 32 people were killed, 133 were injured. The Islamic State claimed responsibility for this attack. The question is, why now? Why this sudden spate of attacks in the middle of a pandemic? The increase of violence and bloodshed in Afghanistan in the past several weeks has been blamed on several factors. Most of them related to the Taliban and then the Afghan government. The Taliban do not recognize the Afghan government as a legitimate party to sit with them on a table and negotiate peace. Just with the same reason they continue to attack installations belonging to Afghan governments, but that does not end with killing the government officials and personnel. There have been tens of civilian casualties inflicted by the Taliban, as reported. Civilian casualties are on the rise in Afghanistan. And it is not just the Taliban that's responsible for this. In April, the Taliban killed 208 civilians an increase of 25% from last year. The Afghan National Security Forces are responsible for 172 civilian deaths in the same period, an increase of 38% from last year. These numbers are from the United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan. More than 72 people have already died this month. Who then is responsible for these deaths? There are way too many players in Afghanistan. And the dead are collateral damage as different sides fight to stay relevant in a war-ravaged nation. With Mustafa Kazemi in Kabul, Bureau Report, Vion, World is One.